business owners and leaders. My guess is you are making one of these seven really common mistakes when it comes to your marketing. And by marketing, it's anything that you are putting out there utilizing words and images to connect with your future client or customer. Even those of us who have experience in marketing make these mistakes. The reason is because we get something called the curse of knowledge. We get so used to our industry and we become experts in our areas that we forget what it's like to be somebody who is unaware of what we already know. It's the curse of knowledge. So we start using language that doesn't connect. We start moving further and further away from the experience as the new person. It's also common because many of us, at least the ones that I talk to, we are marketing ourselves. And so we are putting something out there as a brand that is a part of who we are. We can think of our business brand as being a sub brand of us. And so we get in our heads and we get jumbled and mixed up with what kinds of words we should be using when it comes to business marketing. And another reason that we get mixed up and messed up is because when we start to put our thoughts into words and we put them down on paper and we get them out on a direct mailer or into an email or into a social media post or into an event, we start to become a little weird. Like our writing is not what we would say conversationally. And marketing, as we discussed last time, is building relationships through connecting conversations. So if the conversation is robotic or strange, you're not gonna connect. So believing that you're a person who wants to connect with more people that need what you have or want what you have, and you're hoping that through that connection and relationship building that they eventually convert, they become a customer, they become a client, they become a supporter, then this video is for you. I want you to listen to these seven mistakes and identify if you're making one of them. So if you're not connecting and converting, then you might be confusing and losing potential relationship, potential people to serve. It's kind of like a bad first date. Imagine going on a first date and the person talks the entire time. You can't even finish a sentence before they come out with another thought. It's a very awkward interaction and either you'll get bored because you're tired of listening to them or you're gonna to start to wonder if they even care about you or if they're super, super nervous. You're gonna be so distracted by how many words are coming at you like a, like a fire hose. You're not gonna really be interested in a second go round of that. Or think of the person who says nothing where you're having to ask all the questions and do all of the work. That makes a second date very unappealing. Or what about the person that's just boring? You can't find common ground or interest. Remember in the last video, when I talked about marketing, we talked about a conversation with a person at a party and we talked about having common interests and then being interested. So somebody is asking questions about you and then being interesting, right? And that that's all a part of this marketing messaging. Well, imagine being with someone who just doesn't seem interested in you, doesn't seem that you have anything in common, it's unlikely you're gonna have a second day with them either. There are several things that you could do to make a first date very awkward all in the conversation. And marketing is kind of like that. It's your first opportunity of a conversation and then you have second and third and fourth opportunities, hopefully, if you make a good initial connection, a good first impression. So some first impression places might be in your social media. They might find you on social media, although many times they might hear about you and they go to your website and then they go to social media to kind of see if the if it all lines up and matches up. They're trying to get to know you a little bit better. So what words you use and how you put yourself out there is going to establish whether somebody feels any sense of connection to you. Now, it doesn't have to be that they want to be your friend or go on a date with you. It's that they feel like they could trust you, that they could like you, especially when we're in the service-based industries. Then they're gonna have to have some sort of belief 
they could have some kind of trustworthy relationship with you. So let's dive into these seven common mistakes that people make in their copywriting, in their copy, which is just the marketing messaging. It's the words that are being used in your marketing. Let's talk about those seven mistakes in real examples. Now, real, I have taken these from inspiration, but it isn't a real company because I don't wanna throw anybody under the bus. However, I'm going to give you different ways that the marketing shows up and different, the seven different mistakes and see if you can catch them uh, as we go along. Okay, so as a reminder to get on the same page, marketing is relationship building, marketing messaging is starting that conversation that is intended to connect. And we're hoping to continue conversations that will then convert. So if we don't connect and convert and we make these copywriting mistakes, then we will confuse and lose potential business. Let's take an example. There's a mom who has a child who suffers from allergies. She is looking for a solution for her child. This is the person we're trying to reach, okay? That's the target market. We talked about them last time, the ideal client, and how to know who that is and the demographic and all that. So we've narrowed that down. We've got this mom, she's having this conversation at coffee with a friend, discussing her son's allergies and how that holds him back in life, okay? Copyright mistake coming at you right now. Allergon, a brand backed by experience. In business since 19, 82. It all started with our grandfather, Cal Coons, who was a rugged mountain climber. He lived in a small town in the Rocky Mountains and loved being outdoors. He had three children, one of which is the current owner, Samantha Self. Let's just stop right there. I'm going to call this copy mistake Biography Betty. It's important that they understand who we are and that they get to know us. However, think about that first date scenario. If they just start telling you everything about their past when you don't know their family you're not you have no connection to their family their family has nothing to do with your date right now and where you're going in the future same thing here this mom does not care about the company's history and your grandfather and and how it got passed down and where the warehouse is and all those things they just don't usually care on the first date now is that information important somewhere maybe it could be appropriate somewhere but most of the time, we don't care. We care about the details about you as it pertains to me. So if I'm the mom looking for allergies uh, or an allergy solution for my son, I might care about your story that maybe you had a son that you had tried all the different things and couldn't come up with a, a good solution that didn't lead to side effects. So maybe your story is relatable for me and that's how you came up with this. So it's almost like your story is a bit of a testimony to the product that this person, Allergon, is serving. Make sense? This one's called Biography Betty, mistake number one. It's not about you. Copywriting and marketing message mistake number two. Poetic Pam. Climb again, live again, and breathe again. Breath of life. Upon awakening, you feel the fail. You strive and strain, but to no avail. You are tired at the start, no matter what you try. Your nose runs like a river with an itch in your eye. Okay, cute and clever, but listen. If I'm looking for a solution at 10 o'clock at night and I am a tired mom, I am not interested in your poetry ability. Now, the only time that you want to use poetry on your website is if you sell your words, if you're selling your book, you're selling your poetry. Otherwise, cute and clever can confuse and lose. Poetic Pam is mistake number two. You don't need to be fancy, be clear. Mistake number three. We are an allergy company with allergy solutions suited to stop your allergies in their tracks, leaving you feeling more alive, inspired, and free. We have allergy solutions for every type of person, man, woman, young, and old. We know you struggle to have relief from your pesky allergies. Spring is a season to look forward to, you, to, yet you are grabbing the tissues, avoiding the sunshiny days due to the stuff floating in the air. You've tried so many other things, but they... Look, I'm gonna be honest. I have a lot of words. <laughs> so... Being clever because I love themes and because I have a lot of words, these last two copywriting mistakes can be my mistake. I have to be careful about not having too much fluff, too many 
words. So when I go back to some of my copy, I have to eliminate sentences. I have to eliminate words. Now, on social media, I do tend to post longer captions because I have a teacher bent. I am an educator at heart. And I feel like that's important for people to know when they're going to coach with me that I'm going to be resourcing them, giving them some why behind the what so that they feel equipped and empowered to move forward with a why for themselves. They, My hope is as leaders, as I am coaching leaders, that they will then coach other people with the same knowledge. So where it's appropriate to educate, we can educate. So those of us in the service-based industry usually have a bent toward education. So we are going to struggle with this wordy Winston. I'm talking about the first conversations. I'm talking about your website. I'm talking about um, maybe at an event where you're presenting little handout materials that you're giving, brochures, things like that. They should not be so long and so much. It's just too much information. So if somebody lands on your website and they feel like they have to study, they won't stay. If, if you give them a brochure where they're like, I'm going to need an hour to read this, they probably won't, right? So, Wordy Winston, take some things out, eliminate the fluff, get to the point. What is the point that they want to know? Now, to answer that question, I use something called a copy compass, and I'll refer back to this at another time, maybe at the end of this video, we'll see how much time I have. But that copy compass can help you to stay on topic, stay to the point, and be clear so that the person coming to you is getting what they're looking for. Here's mistake number four. These last three examples were used on a website, okay? I also brought up the idea of it being in print materials and other things like that. I'm gonna give you a phone call for this mistake because many of us do discovery calls, okay? calls, phone calls, conversations. That's marketing, right? You're having a conversation. So let's talk about this phone call. Caller. Hi, I was wondering if I could talk to someone about Allergon. Here's the Allergon sales rep. And then the case for you and me, it's us. Hi, I'd love to tell you about Allergon. Allergon has been in business since 1982. We have a local owner, Allergon. The product comes in three different quantities and three different forms. It's bubblegum flavor, da, 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 da. Caller. Okay, thanks. I was wondering if it'd be safe to give to my child. Allergon sales rep. Our products go through a seven-step safety protocol before hitting the shelves. Okay, I think that you're getting it here. The phone caller, number one, didn't ask enough questions. So when you're on a discovery call, yes, it, you are discovering more about them and they are discovering more about you, but what you're really discovering is how could you connect their need with what you have in the best alignment possible? So those phone calls start by you asking a lot of questions, letting them talk through some of their concerns, hearing what their hesitations and what their obstacles have been, where they've ran into issues before, what they've already tried, what's worked, what's not worked, right? You're trying to get an idea of where they're at. This particular example, there were no questions asked, but when a question was asked, the common theme of what was being said with this particular phone call is that it was facts, facts and features, boring. They're not looking for the facts and features because the facts and features are about you. And in this case, it's about a product. So you don't want to talk necessarily about you directly and the history and go into the education. That's not the time, right? That's boring Bob. You are there to get to know them. You are there to understand where they're at. You are there to find the intersection of what you have and what you know and what they need. Find that intersection. That's the goal of phone calls. This is marketing messaging, even though it's not written down. Copywriting, marketing messaging, mistake number five. Confusing Cassie. Take a look at this billboard. Aspire to climb higher with Allergon. If I drove by a billboard like that, I might think that I'm going to climb some kind of a mountain. I'm going to join an expedition. I'm going to go on an adventure. And then I'd be confused with Allergon. Now the name itself makes me think allergies, but aspire to climb higher? It's cute and clever. 
but it's also very confusing because it's not clear. If we have something that's vague in our writing, if we aren't making it clear, if I'm not getting to the point and talking directly about what you want, if I keep it vague, you will lose people, especially in the initial conversations. Okay, so marketing messaging and copywriting, we cannot be vague or we will confuse. We cannot, you can't speak around things and under things. You have to speak to the thing. So be careful not to be too vague or you'll be confusing Cassie. And if they are confused, you will lose them. This next copywriting mistake I mentioned in the intro of this video, it comes from the curse of knowledge, but it's called over the head Fred. This is an email example. Hello, allergy sufferer. Thank you for your interest in our product. It's likely that you are suffering from rhinitis due to the body's reaction to airborne allergens. Your histamine response is triggering the inflammation, leaving you symptomatic and with chronic rhinitis presenting year round. Wah, 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 wah. Talking over the head. Rhinitis is stuffy runny nose. I don't call it rhinitis. You probably don't call it rhinitis. So our marketing can't call it rhinitis. Now, could that show up down the road in educating your, your client? Yes, once they're a client, maybe there's a reason you would need to call it that. Maybe because the, the medication or the product that you're giving them has that on the label for technicality purposes. So maybe you just educate them and you let them know, hey, this word just is stuffy and runny nose. But when we are having the connecting conversations, this is talking right over my head. Really easy to do, just like I mentioned earlier in this video, because you've been in the industry that you're in for a long time and that's why you have a business or why you're running this organization is because you know some things, you have some knowledge, you have some things to, to give someone else that can impact them. We just have to be careful that that knowledge doesn't get in the way of our connection especially up front here when in the marketing conversations we're trying to get at their level and if you remember the phrase i used last time was related the gate we're still on the outside with them still having gate conversations they're not sitting at our coffee table yet so we can't dive in too deep be careful about not being over the head fred this last mistake happens as i mentioned that when we try to take our words in our head and put them on paper that somehow we become really formal. There's a time and place for formalities and there's a time and place for professionalism, but we can be both professional and personable at the same time. Take a look at this email. Greetings, we are pleased to inform you that we are able to address your most immediate concerns. Please submit your request and we will be prompt in our response and solution to your current dilemma. We take pleasure in delivering an applicable solution to our valued customers and look forward to our future correspondence. Is it bad? No. Is it personable? No. And if you're gonna sell a service, there's a person behind the product. There's a person behind the package, and that's you. And they wanna know that that person cares and is real. So if you make it too formal in effort to be professional, you'll lose people because you'll lose the connection. I'm not saying you have to be like, hey girl, what up? But maybe. Maybe if that's appropriate for your audience, maybe if that's who your target market is and that's gonna help her relate to you, maybe. You don't have to be that extreme, but I encourage you to have a voice. So whatever your voice is, my voice isn't that extreme. My voice is more conversational, but it does have that educational bent. But I'll put little things in there that I would normally say when I'm writing an email, I'll put things in there like, I don't think so, right? Because I might normally say that. I'm not going to say greetings. I never say greetings. Hey you, I'll say that, okay? So be careful with this one, Stuffy Susie, that in your effort to be professional, that you don't lose the personal. Okay, seven mistakes that you can make. I'm guessing that you maybe have done all of these or maybe if you're like, oh, no, 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 I'm not good with my words. Maybe you land heavy in one or two of those areas. 
So if you would like to have a guide, something that you can look at when you are sitting down to write marketing emails, when you're sitting down to do website copy, when you're sitting down to plan um, some direct mailers or some kind of ad, ad that you're putting out there or you're preparing an event and you're going to be on stage and, and presenting or, or you're planning your social media posts that you can use these as reminders. I have a guide that talks about these mistakes and then gives you ways to correct them. Now, a lot of them are focused on website because the website is uh, kind of like the coffee shop. It's where you're going to meet, right? It's where you're going to meet up to have further conversation after the first phone call right? You're going to meet on the website. So the website is often a place that we will lose our people. And the website is a good start to address your copywriting. So if you would like that guide, go ahead and look down in the description and I will put a link in there for you to grab, um, plug in your email and I'll send it over to you. Um, I also have a checklist that might be helpful for your website homepage. If you want that, maybe we can email back and forth. You can let me know and I can give you that checklist for your homepage. Gives you seven different things to be thinking about that you'll wanna include in your copy on your homepage. Okay, I know that this is overwhelming. Some of you already feel like there's no way I have time to think through all of this. I don't wanna be a professional marketer. I totally get it. I am happy to work with you to analyze and audit your marketing messaging to help you determine what I mentioned was that copy compass, the the shortened, detailed, clear message that needs to go out in all of your communication channels. I'm happy to help you with strategy. I'm happy to talk marketing with you. In fact, I have a referral for you, a, a company for you that can help you and do this for you. I understand that some of you are in that place. You've done some of this on your own and you're ready to pass it off and delegate it to somebody who knows what they're doing. Let me know. Contact me. Make sure you let me know what you're currently doing and what you want to be doing. And we can do a free phone call to talk through uh, the potentials. Okay. Thank you so much for listening in, for giving me your time. I know you're busy. I'm hoping that this was helpful for you in multiple ways and that your copy begins to connect more and more by just adjusting and fine tuning and tweaking at least one of these mistakes.